Hey everybody, and everybody's buddy, it's me, Murphy Surf, with another exciting installment of the Knights of the Buffet Table. This is episode 5 of our series about the armor of God. People wear helmets to play rough sports, like football and hockey, and they put one on when they step on the plate in baseball. People who do construction and other dangerous jobs wear helmets. Soldiers, of course, wear helmets in combat. And if you're going to ride on a scooter or skateboard or rollerblades or a bike, you better wear your helmet. The helmet protects the head, one of the most important and fragile parts of the body. Today, we're going to talk about how the helmet of salvation protects something even more precious, our soul. We'll see how Jesus died in our place through the life of Barabbas. But first, we'll see what happened after Rodney of Rudebeke came back from Snackford. Greetings, Sir Figgyfer. I'm back. Hello, Rodney. How was your trip to Snackford? Oh, Figgyfer, it was quite the hero's journey. I love these armored shoes. They have really nice insoles. I don't think I've run so fast in my life. Splendid. You have a shield now, too. Yes, I learned about trusting in the Lord. King Geoffrey gave it to me as a reward for taking the dangerous journey to deliver the message of peace. You will find it helpful. I already did. Did you ever see a fire fuchsia? I had to face one on the trail here. I'm glad they can't walk. And I'm glad they don't live up in trees. Right. What if I got hit in the head from above? Lucky for you, I have something to protect your mind. A helmet. Wow. Isn't that spiffy? Well, I thought you might like it. Figgyfer, you've outdone yourself. This is a nice piece of armor. It has to be. The helmet protects your head and everything in it. You need the best protection you can get. Will it guard my mind, Sir Figgyfer? The only thing that would guard it more than that is the Helmet of Salvation. The what? I said, the Helmet of Salvation. It's the gift God gives you when he forgives your sins. You become God's child. You become untouchable. Spiritually speaking, of course. Wow, that's some powerful stuff. My helmet will protect you against the weapons of men. Swords, arrows, and clubs. And those sticks with the pointy ball on it? Yes, that's too. It's called a morning star. I thought a morning star was some kind of boat. Well, when it comes to spiritual protection, you need the helmet of salvation. That sounds fine. I'll take one. You'll have to go to God for that one. But now I must tell you some grave news, Rodney. What is it, Figgyfer? You remember Count Trafalgar? Sure. He wanted to train me to be a knight. He is a traitor. What does he trade? Yoki cards? I collect those too, you know. No. I mean, he's turned against the kingdom of Neapolitan and King Ripple. He has kidnapped Princess Imelda, and it's up to you to save her. Me defeat Count Travelgar? I'm not even a knight myself. That's the thing about fighting in the kingdom. You must fight, even while you're still training. Do I get a weapon yet? Yes, you must recover the sword of Rubavia, and then you must save the princess. I always get more than I order here. Thanks, Sir Figgyfer. One more thing. Beware the surly squirrels of Rubavia. Squirrels? Okay, then I'm off on my next quest. Always a pleasure, Sir Rodney, and Godspeed to you. Hey everyone, I'm here with Stuart the Turtle, talking about the armor of God. Turtles know all about armor. This shell protects me from dogs and foxes. I just hide inside. That's right because a turtle has a shell, which is armor that protects him from danger. Stuart, can you tell me the armor of God we've already talked about? There's the belt of truth, and the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel shoes, 
and the shield of faith. And today we're talking about the helmet of salvation. Stuart, do you know why knights wear metal armor when they went into combat? To scare the bad guys. I look like a robot from the future. Not quite. They wear the armor to protect their bodies so they don't get hurt or even killed. Nobody wants that. That's why you and I need to wear our spiritual armor. Hold on just a second. I never see you wear any armor. Not a helmet, not a breastplate, not anything. Well, that's true. Our armor isn't like the Roman soldiers or the medieval knights. I would look silly walking around wearing that. Even sillier than you look now. Our battle isn't against flesh and blood or physical people. We have a spiritual enemy. For a spiritual enemy, we need spiritual armor. Today is the most important piece of armor of all. The turtle shell. Kids, you should all have one of these. No, I'm talking about something even a turtle doesn't have. The helmet of salvation. Oh, salvation? Aren't those the spotted dogs in the movie 101 Salvations? No, you're thinking of Dalmatians. Salvation means that we've been saved from our sin. We have accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, and we have become Christians. How did Jesus save us? Well, I have a Lego Bible story to share with you. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Barabbas stood in his cell, looking between the bars. He deserved to be in prison, and he knew it, for murder. His punishment by law would be death, but he didn't know when it would happen. Instead, he sat in his cell, waiting, with bad food, little water, and lots of rats. That morning, though, he heard noise outside the prison. It was the morning they brought Jesus before the Roman governor Pilate. Pilate began to question Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? My kingdom is not of this world. If it was, my followers would try to rescue me, Jesus said. Pilate turned back to the crowd. I don't see any reason to kill him. I usually set a prisoner free for Passover. Would you like me to release the king of the Jews? No, not him. We want Barabbas. 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 They began to shout. The killer, Pilate thought. Barabbas listened. He didn't see everything going on, but he did hear the crowd calling his name. Pilate gave Jesus to the soldiers to be beaten with a whip. They hit him with their fists. The soldiers made a crown of thorns and pressed into his head. Hey, King of the Jews, here's your crown. Pilate brought him out again. Here is the man you accuse. Barabbas heard footsteps coming to his cell. A key went in the lock and the door swung open. The Roman guard stood there. Barabbas, the governor wants you. Barabbas stood before the people next to Pilate. He could see Jesus on the other side. He heard tales of that man before. He had healed a sick and turned water to wine. Even in his crowd, they saw Jesus as a hero. Which shall I release to you, Jesus or Barabbas? Barabbas, the crowd shouted. Barabbas, Pilate told him, get out of here. I never want to see your face again. He couldn't believe his ears. Free to go? How is this possible? He fled before they changed their mind. Not far from there was a hill called Golgotha. Two thieves were hung beside Jesus. Barabbas had met those thieves before in jail. They waited for death just like him. But they put Jesus in the middle. That should have been my cross, Barabbas said. He died in my place. So Barabbas should have been crucified, but Jesus was? Well, that's right, Stuart. Barabbas in the story represents you and I. The Bible says that the only way to pay for sin is death. Oh no, I'm in such big trouble. That's true, Stuart, if Jesus hadn't taken our place. He took the punishment of sin on himself, even though he never sinned. God gave him victory over sin, and even while he was on the cross, he was able to bring a thief to heaven. So if a kid trusts in Jesus, he might be safe from sin too? Salvation doesn't mean you might be safe. It means you are safe. You are saved and there's nothing the devil can do to change that. He can kill your physical body, but your spirit belongs to God. When you have salvation, you are bound for paradise. Eternity in heaven with Jesus! Kids, 
The head is the most fragile but important part of the body. Our brains are in our head, and that's where we make our choices. We make decisions every day that have consequences. The most important decision any of us will ever make is whether or not to accept Jesus as our Savior. God sent Jesus to do what we could not do. He became our shield and our protector against the eternal death that comes from sin. There is nothing we can do on our own to gain our salvation. But the Bible tells us if we place our faith in Jesus, he will give us the helmet of salvation freely. Salvation means you're forgiven. It means your future is secure. You are God's child and you are bound for heaven. Stuart, will you help the kids pray to ask Jesus to become their Savior? Okay. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, thank you for paying for my sins on the cross. Thank you for paying for my sins on the cross. Thank you for taking my place. Thank you for taking my place. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. I believe you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. Please wash away my sins and accept me into your family. Please wash away my sins and accept me into your family. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, thanks for watching today, kids. I hope you continue to walk with Jesus. See you next time. Bye. Bye.